Today I want to take a look at how to synchronize a SQL table on-premise to a SharePoint Online list. Here we're looking at a SharePoint Online team site. It has 91 rows from the famous Northwind database. And this is a customer table with first name, last name, city, country, phone, five fields, and a primary key ID number. This is different than SharePoint's ID number. This is the primary key from the SQL side. It's something that was defined in the user data, in the user schema, as opposed to SharePoint's ID number, which is a system primary key. So this is the data we're looking at. It's going to be six wide and 91 tall, decent amount of data. And the question is, can we synchronize from on-prem into the cloud quickly and effectively using PowerShell code? And with that, there's really three steps. Load the source, the SQL query. Two, load the destination SharePoint list. And three, compare them. So the comparison goes a little something like this. It's a Venn diagram where we have SQL as the data source. And we're copying that out to a SharePoint list as our destination. In that scenario, we have three different possibilities. We can delete the extras. We can update the items which are matching, or we can insert the things which are new. So there's a couple of different ways of going about it. The insert, update, and delete, they kind of each have their own logic for how to compare the primary key. And then update really focuses on the values themselves, if there's any value differences. So that's what we're wanting to accomplish. We have some PowerShell code. We'll go ahead and give it a run and watch it populate the SharePoint list. And just for reference, I'm going to bring our SQL table in here to take a look at querying the original source. So this is our select statement. We have a Northwind database. And we have our schema, where we see the five fields mentioned earlier, plus the customer ID as a primary key. So this is our source data. It's in SQL, 91 rows, and that's what we're wanting to populate into the SharePoint Online list. It is worth mentioning the SharePoint Online list already has the fields set up. Now it does have extras. So there is a minimum spec, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect match. If you wanna add extra fields, knock yourself out, go ahead. It's gonna be looking for the fields with the same name. That's where its focus is gonna be which opens up some cool business use cases if you're synchronizing the data, but then adding notes to it, adding an approval workflow, using this as an input to maybe a Power Apps Canvas form, an input to a larger data collection process where you're augmenting your relational data with extra fields that SharePoint has. Totally fine, that's supported. So here looking at the code, we've got a couple different things going. Uh, we are loading in some .NET assemblies for system data and collections. We are bringing in the modules SQL Server and PMP PowerShell. Makes sense. If you remember, that's our Venn diagram, right? Source and destination. And I've got a helper function coming in here from PowerShell Gallery that converts the data to a hash table. So it's a little easier to handle the values as a hash table for the PMP commandlets on the um, command is add PMP list item. It really likes hash tables. So we wanted to do that as a, a matter of structure. To get there, this helper function will convert our SQL data into hash table so it's easier to work with. Uh, we do have logging support, open close, duration, log subfolder, timestamp, all that good stuff. So in the main function, I'm going to run a couple different things. We open up SQL, we query our select statement to get the source. And we are marking which field is the primary key. Really important stuff right here, because that's how we make our decision to insert, update, delete. Uh, here we have the SharePoint Online destination. We're going to use uh, client ID and client secret for the connection. And then it goes through all the various logic to do comparisons. We are using paging. So there's paging support here, one thing you want to look at. And that would support large list of over 5,000 items. Uh, there's a comparison that does the delete first. So it's going to see any extras and get those out of the way with the remove commandlet. And then on the add, we're going to go ahead and execute this uh, by taking the objects, flatten them out, doing a comparison. Uh, is the match item found at all? If it's formatted consistently for the compare object support. In this whole 
block, the, the most important things to look at are going to be batching here, where all of the add, update, add, add, maybe there's another update, more ads, all of these transactions get pooled together. They get collected, and then they execute one time with an HTTP post over the network. That batching allows the speed to move much faster. Essentially, if we collect all our transactions, we send them over the network once. That cuts down on latency, chatter, and things that slow down the process. So when we're doing add list item, there it is, batch. And so we're collecting what we would like to do. Set list item, also a batch. And then at the end, this is going to be a single push over the network to do the upload. So pretty cool stuff. Helps us out a lot with speed. In doing the comparison, we are looking at primary key. Can we go find that item and match it? If we have a matched item, what are the values? All, all of that fun stuff. And here we're doing a need update. When we're using the PowerShell compare object, and this is a native command, not a special function we had to make. But if you have two different objects to compare, and here they're both hash tables, the source and destination, are they different? Okay, if it finds any differences, then let's go ahead and push an update and we'll increment. Moving down, we have a summary of the changes made, and that's it. Scripts, uh, pretty simple. So we'll go ahead and get this filled in with a couple of values. One thing I'll need to do is to register an app. So for the app registration, there's a special blog that covers the steps I'll open up. And on this blog post, there's the permission manifest and a couple of shortcuts. Really, we want to navigate into the layouts folder for app reg new ASPX. Open that. And we'll also do app invite ASPX. App reg new will generate an app. I just click the generate button, make two random values. Totally cool. Put in localhost, HTTP localhost. That's fine. And over here, we'll put the name of our application and click create. This block of text gives us the app identity. It doesn't have any permissions yet, but it just kind of creates and defines a new principle, almost like making a user account. Here, put in the ID with a lookup, and we're going to need permissions. So here we want to do full control of the site collection, coming off of our favorite blog post. Do create, and trust it. There you go. Now we have our app registered. Cool stuff. Pretty easy to do, really. I mean, fast and simple. So with that part done, we want to come into our application providing the client ID GUID number that we received. So we'll bring that in and we'll bring over the client secret. There we go. So that covers this part. Uh, for the SQL side, I will put in credentials for the username password, but not going to show those in the video. And the client ID and secret all expire after the video, of course. Good security practices. All right, so those values are into our script. We'll go ahead and hit F5 to execute. Let it run on the bottom panel. It's kind of moving through. Got a few error messages. We'll check it out. Provide a valid argument. Cannot index into array. Let's see what we have there. OK, so now we're executing our script to go ahead and synchronize the data. It's reading the SQL source and looking at the SharePoint destination, and it was able to do 91 additions in a, a tiny seven seconds to download data on both sides and do the 91 row additions. If we go out and check our destination with the SharePoint online list, we'll want to navigate into customers, and here we can take a look at our data. We can see we have customer ID plus the five user defined fields. We actually have the extras, which it leaves alone and skips, but we have all 91 rows. Now, I don't know, just for fun, let's go ahead and grab a handful of these and hit the delete key. Uh, throw away seven items. We come back over and execute our exact same script again. It's loading some modules, looking at IDs, and there you go. Customer ID one through seven. It says the source has 84, destination at 91. We need to add seven items. That's pretty cool stuff. And then even on the destination side, if I put in a hello world and some sort of thing it doesn't recognize, 
and I don't know, put in a couple of them here. Put in two records that they really shouldn't be in this list. They were things added in SharePoint SQL doesn't have any idea about. So here we've got our two deletes, that it was 93 compared to 91, and we're able to execute our deletes, go ahead and get the data cleaned up, and now it moves back in line with the, the records we're looking for. So yeah, this is, this is some cool stuff, just being able to compare both sides, get the data cleaned up, and, and make sure that that's something we're able to process. So it can handle both scenarios, um, insert and delete, and of course update if the tag values are different by comparison. Uh, for that one, it would be more of editing one record. All right, so here we can see that we have the 93 rows compared to 91 with two deletes happening, total count for two, ran in four seconds. And if we go back to our SharePoint list, we see these two hello worlds at the bottom refresh to view the latest scroll down don't see them anymore everything's gone and removed uh, for an update if i were to grab one of these records like maybe this one for a customer id 9 and i don't know just throw away the phone number city and country empty out a couple of cells we, we don't have the data available anymore and we come back over and run our synchronize okay so here we can see the successful single update for primary key number nine. That is part of our output display on line 171 that we're updating up to a given primary key number. We do put the values in from the row that we're enumerating and we collect it into a batch in the background for high speed performance. If we have a high number of updates, it batches all of them for the one network transaction. Go over here, reload the destination, check customer ID number nine. We had deleted out the city, the country, the phone. They have repopulated. We have our one update running successfully. So that's a demo that gives you the insert, update, and delete workloads. A little bit of a run through on the code itself and some of the counting and, and various uh, things that we have for met metrics and st statistics and even a transcript for logging. So this is a simple way to schedule a PowerShell script on-prem and to populate a SharePoint list in the cloud. Thanks for watching.